Not long into my time playing Palea, it became very clear that finding a way to earn gold was going to be incredibly important, so today I'm going to share my favorite way of earning gold that also won't cause you to lose your sanity while doing it. It's probably not the most hyper-efficient method or the absolute best one out there, but that's also not how I play games, and especially with Palea, the goal for me, as it is for many, is to relax and enjoy my time with it, not find the most efficient way of doing something. Palea is an MMO, but unlike almost every other MMO, there is no player economy, meaning you can't spend all your time investing in a singular skill like furniture making, for example, and then turn around and sell the pieces you create to other players. Instead, the only real way to make money is through a shipping bin system like that of Harvest Moon or Stardew Valley. The method I've chosen to run is around the southern region of Bahari Bay, picking up pretty much everything that isn't nailed down and catching every bug I see. I'd primarily focus on the beachy region here, but once that ran dry, I'd sometimes make my way inland to these grassy areas to catch bugs. I try not to do the same thing on repeat too much or for too long because, well, I appreciate my sanity. Doing this for about 50 minutes, however, I ended up making 4,292 gold, which, for easier math, is roughly 5,000 gold per hour. Not too shabby. And that's without selling any cooking ingredients or any gold star critters, which are the ones that can be placed on your housing plot to be displayed in any sort of absurd critter tower that your heart desires, or in, you know, a more normal way. If you were to sell these, however, your gold per hour would be even better. This run can also be done at all hours of the day. My favorite thing about this method is that it's almost entirely self-sustaining and doesn't induce even the slightest bit of FOMO or fear of missing out. There are plenty of ways to earn gold in Palea, but for most of those ways, the items you're selling also have other uses. You could sell your crops or you could cook with them. You could sell your fish or once again, cook with them as well. You could go hunting and sell your haul or use the hides for crafting and meat for food. But with this method, bugs aren't used for anything other than selling, at least the normal ones, and seashells have no purpose either, as far as I'm concerned, so you might as well just sell them all. For this gold farming route, I recommend taking 200 smoke bombs and a stack of food if you have it, assuming you want the extra skill XP that Focus gives you. I also have the first backpack upgrade, so your results will vary if you have any more or less inventory capacity than I do, and if you have more, you might want to take even more smoke bombs with you. Your mileage will also vary if there are other players in the area, but even for me, my results averaged out about the same over time, regardless of if other players were in the area or not. Okay, so here's what I did. I'd always start at the beach, picking up coral, shells, and oysters wherever I saw them. These don't sell for a ton, but are available in bulk, making them a great addition to your haul. Plus, oysters can be opened for a chance to receive a pearl, which are quite valuable, and meat, which can be sold or kept for cooking purposes. I'd also attempt to catch every critter I saw, which includes Bahari crabs and garden snails, as well as the harder to catch and more valuable spine shell crabs and stripe shell snails both of which are purple and bigger than the normal crabs and snails, making them very easy to spot. If the beaches ran dry or I got bored of them, I'd head inland to the fields. There's not too much to pick up off the ground, but the bugs here are incredibly dense, so even though some of the more common ones like the Killama Night Moth, Common Blue Butterfly, and Paper Lantern Bug only sell for 12 gold each, you can catch so many so quickly that it makes it worth it, at least in my opinion. You'll also want to catch the common field crickets, and if you're lucky enough to spot them, the fairy mantis, lunar fairy moth, and Bahari glowbug. There are also two bodies of water in the area that can sometimes spawn brushtail dragonflies and the more valuable inky dragonflies around them, which are worth quite a bit more than most of the other insects in the area. If this is all too much to remember, simply remember, pick up and catch everything. Simple as that. If you just mindlessly run around the area, you can be done with a run in about 15 minutes. After that, either open up your map and return home if it's off its 30 minute cooldown at least, or find the nearest stable and teleport home for a measly 10 gold. Since the run takes about 15 minutes, your free return home will be available every other run. Once home, simply sell what you'd like to sell, keep what you'd like to keep, and don't forget to open up any oysters that you get as you might get lucky and get a pearl or two, or even more if you're super lucky. 
Run back and repeat this two more times and you'll net yourself just under 5,000 gold in around 50 minutes, or at least those were my results after several runs. I also mentioned this run is mostly self-sustaining. What do I mean by that? Well, while you're going to be blowing through smoke bombs like crazy, it only takes one clay and one sundrop lily to make 20 more smoke bombs. Sundrop lilies are found along the very route you'll be running, with quite a few being available along the northern side of the beach. As for clay, while not found along the route, it can be found along the entire coastline within Kilima Village, as well as around Fisherman's Lagoon or the Lake by Einar, as most people call it. Walking along the coastline and harvesting everything I saw, including clay, only took me about 5 minutes, and by the end I ended up with 90 clay. That's enough for 1800 smoke bombs. It also helps that the coastline has a ton of sundrop lilies along it as well. Between those and the sundrop lilies acquired from doing the actual beach runs themselves, I found my stockpile of them slowly growing despite constantly making more and more smoke bombs. Lastly, if you want to optimize this run as much as possible, be sure not to take anything with you that you won't need. That includes arrows. You won't be doing any hunting, so don't bother taking them. Also, although it's a bit of work and might cause stress for some, you have the option of keeping a close eye on your inventory, making sure to fill up each stack of bugs as high as possible before heading back, or perhaps avoiding catching a shiny bug that would fill up the very last slot in your inventory, when instead, you could catch 5 regular ones which would be worth quite a bit more instead. After a few hours of this, you should now be sitting quite comfortably, at least until you spend it all. <laughs> And as I said before, this is just one of the many, many ways of earning gold in Palea. And a game this cozy is intended to be played however you feel like playing it, so by no means feel like you have to do this, or for that matter, what any other content creator says. My name's Dr. Dub, and as a Palea partner, I get access to early information about the game. However, I'm not being paid at all, and my thoughts are entirely my own. With that said though, if you'd like to be kept up to date on the game or have any questions you'd like answered, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and leaving any questions or comments you might have about the game down below, and I'll do my best to answer them. I have a long list of Paleo videos I plan on making, and that list is only growing longer the more I play, which, uh, is a lot. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching though, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Until next time, as always, take care.